So I took the day off of work, getting a workout in here at South Reno Athletic Club. Gonna head home, make a smoothie, hang out for a little bit, and then uh, see how this one o'clock start at the Peppermill is. Not all that optimistic about the lineup though, but we'll see. Hey, there's my boy. How's Leo doing? What are you doing today, boy? Just hanging out? Why well, you gotta be so crazy all the time? My boy Leo and my cat Oliver, who just likes to sit in my spot, waiting for me to move him away. What's going on today, Oliver? Yeah, not much to say per usual. All right, so I told you a minute ago I was gonna make a smoothie, which I do every single morning, and I figured, what the heck, I'm just gonna make a smoothie on the vlog because it's my vlog and no one can stop me. So the first thing I do, I got the Vitamix, put a little ice in there first. Then I got the frozen berries. I've gone to the more mix of blueberries, blackberries, and strawberries instead of what I used to do, which was just strawberries. Add some spinach. Spring mix. Can't get much healthier than that, obviously. I didn't used to do this, but now I've been throwing in a half of an avocado every single time. It just kind of gives it that creaminess and they're just overall very healthy. A little whey protein from Costco, and come to find out I'm just about out of it, but got enough for today. Chia seeds, cannot go wrong. A couple walnuts, not many. And really the secret ingredient to this smoothie, I feel, are the sliced almonds, the pre-sliced ones. I can never go back to not having them in there. So you put all those in. I just put a little bit of almond milk and then just put some water in to uh, be able to blend it. Maybe let the Vitamix do its thing. And that's all you gotta do. All right, here's the deal. You guys should go out there and fucking run over these guys tomorrow. And I'm gonna yell for no fucking reason! Okay. So I'm catching up on hard knocks here. Which is the best thing about preseason football. The only good thing about preseason football. And Frank Caliendo going into Raiders training camp and doing John Gruden with John Gruden in front of him. That was the greatest thing in the history of hard knocks. Therefore, that was the greatest moment in preseason football history. All right, getting ready to go here. Grab the player's card and two hockey pucks. Hopefully we won't need them both. And since we're not working, we'll go with a hat. Couple of choices here. Still my number one starter. cruising in today, listening to some Green Day. They're my favorite band. They're the only favorite band I've ever had since I started listening to them in 1994 on cassette tape. And uh, it just never gets old. Can't wait for them to come out with some new stuff. Love everything they've ever done and the best band to see in concert too. I saw them once in San Francisco in 2005 during the American Idiot Tour. Then again in 2009 at the Shark Tank where they did an acoustic version of Christy Road, which was unreal. And then again in 2016 in Berkeley, which I overpaid for as a smaller show, but it was still great to see. So that said, we are heading in here to the Pepper Mill to check out this one o'clock start three five game. And we come in on a downswing. We had about a $7,800 upswing or so from July into August. 
and now we enter today on about a three thousand dollar downswing uh, definitely doesn't bother me um, have run really bad on this particular downswing but I've also made a few mistakes so gotta try to work on those I think if there's a motto for this vlog that I would like to have not that there necessarily needs to be it would be start ahead stay ahead meaning the key to winning money is get big hands get aces get kings flop sets value bet them have people pay you off that's always been my game plan it probably always will be my game plan but it just seems like such a high percentage of the hands that I win I simply had the best hand the entire way and me trying to make big hands to draw out on other people that's how I get in trouble so I'm gonna try and not do as much of that as I do simply getting the best hand and hanging on to it but of course things change in the heat of battle so we'll find out today at Pepino. So we jump into the game and the first interesting hand I get into comes when the button straddles to 10 and I'm under the gun with ace deuce of diamonds. I make a loose open to 30 given how tight the game is and the button is a guy who says that he doesn't watch this vlog but let's be honest, we know that he does. He calls and the blinds fold so it's 60 in, it comes 887 with two hearts. I bet 50 obviously as a bluff hoping that on a paired board he probably doesn't have much. However, he makes the call. So with $160 in, the turn is another eight. Now if he has a flush or a straight draw, he has a little incentive to continue drawing to it. I bet 75 and he lays it down pretty quickly. The next hand comes when the hijack opens to 20 and I have queen nine of spades in the small blind. I complete as does the big blind. So it's $60 in. The flop comes queen seven deuce with one spade. I lead for 25, hoping that the big blind would actually give me action and kind of hoping the hijack wouldn't. And sure enough, that's what happens. So with 110 in, the turn comes a five. I bet 40, and the big blind thinks about it for a second and calls. So with $200 in, the river comes an eight. And now I figure it's best to check. In retrospect, part of me thinks that I should have bet out and then likely folded to a raise instead. But he ends up betting 55, and I just did not think that he would bluff in this spot. I figured he would check back all of his queens, and I couldn't figure out too many missed draws to put him on here, so I decided simply to lay it down. A little bit later on, I look down at five, seven of spades from plus two, and raise it to 15 and get a call from the low jack. So with 30 in, it comes seven of diamonds, three of spades, four of diamonds giving me top pair, a gut shot, and a backdoor flush draw. I bet 20, and the low jack calls. So with $70 in, the turn is the ace of clubs. I still think I'm likely good here, and I still have a good draw to go with it, so I bet 25. The low jack raises me to 60, and I know this guy well enough to know that he usually doesn't have an ace here, given the fact that he called me on the flop, and I know that he will raise draws a lot of the time. So with that in mind, I make the call. With $190 in, the river is another four, and I check. He thinks for a while and checks it back. I show my hand, and as I suspected, it was good. Sometimes I choose to include interesting hands I'm not involved in. In this particular hand, we get an OMC who loves to trap. Despite the fact that he wears the same type of thing every day he shows up to play poker, I wouldn't be shocked if he went home with a coonskin cap on like Davy Crockett. Anyway, that aside, he limps in from plus one. And I look down at sixes and choose to overlimp because he has a very high limp raising frequency. And he's only playing 200 effective. The player on my left, however, didn't really know that. So he raised it. And sure enough, that OMC does limp re-raise. I fold my sixes, and the low jack makes the call. 
they end up getting it all in on a $400 pot on a 10 high board. The low jack had jack 10. And sure enough, this initial OMC limper, pocket kings. So with OMCs, very important to pay a lot of attention when they limp in early. Next hand comes when I pick up pocket aces under the gun and make it 20. And two pros call me. With 60 in, it comes jack 4-4. Four, four. It gets checked to me, and I decide to check it back. I do this because I feel that against pros, I have to mix in some checks in this spot, or I'll be too predictable. The turn comes another four, and a small blind now bets out for 60. I just call, planning on raising the river. The other player folds, so with 180 in, the river comes off a queen, and now he checks. I bet 85, thinking that he has to pay that amount off with the jack every single time. He does indeed do that, so we take down a pot of $345. Rack up shortly thereafter, booking a win. Wrapping up a session here at Pepper Mill. About five hours worth of play the game. Not very good once again. But I was still able to book a $428 win, so I will not complain about that in the midst of this current downswing. Gonna head home, and I'm thinking that uh, my dog Leo is gonna be antsy. So I'm gonna uh, take him out and run his ass. Wear him out. Something you gotta do with golden retrievers. Just got too much energy for his own good. As always, thanks to all of you for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram at Ben Beach. And I will see you back here next time. You know what? I'm not leaving. I'm not fucking leaving! So we're not leaving. We're not leaving. For those of you that think I stole that from Jamin Burton, I didn't. I used that a number of vlogs ago before he used it anyway. One of my favorite clips from any movie ever. Leonardo DiCaprio and the Wolf of Wall Street. So we're not done yet after all because I'm checking in on a Friday after a long session on a Thursday and I got into a crazy, crazy hand against the guy who you saw smoking the tree in his car at the end of the last walk, one Reno Grinder. It happened when I raised it in early position with Queen 10 of Diamonds. He called me and the flop ended up coming out nine, 10, six, all hearts. I bet 30 with top pair and a queen kicker and he made the call. Turn comes the queen of spades. Give me top two pair. I bet 80, and again, he calls. River comes out a 10, giving me tens full of queens. After he called the turn bet, I had a pretty good feeling that he had a strong hand here. I actually thought it was possible, but he flopped a flush, and if he was just drawing to the ace, well, he's missed anyway. So I figure I might as well bet big. I make it 300. He thinks about it for a long time before shoving all in for about 400 or so more. I'm obviously not folding here, though it did kind of cross my mind that he might have flopped a straight flush because I don't see him raising all in here with too many hands, that's for sure. But obviously I'm not folding, so I make the call, and he has 9-10 for just the slightly smaller full house. So a massive cooler that I benefit from against one Reno grinder. That went on to put me in beast mode, as I like to say now. Had an absolutely phenomenal run after that hand. 
booking a win of over 3,000 and pretty much digging out of this downswing. So couldn't have gone better for me. That will be the official end of this vlog. And we will see you next time.